Okay, now let us see another aspect that is designing of micro instructions. <coughs> Till now we have seen that in the control memory every location will have the number of bits which are same as the number of control signals that you have within the system. Okay. Now in any system I can have hundreds of control signals. That means our control memory every location must have hundreds of bits which makes the control memory very big. Okay, so, we have to think is there any way by which the number of bits in every location in the control memory can be reduced. One of the simplest way is instead of directly putting the control signals in the control memory, you encode the control signals and put the encoded uh, control signal in the control memory. So, that way if I have n number of control signals present in a system, the number of bits in every location in the memory that we will need is log <coughs> of n to the base 2 and then ceiling function of this. So, that will be the number of bits needed in every location in the control memory. But this has a disadvantage that is while analyzing the instructions that we have, we have seen that in any cases we need more than one control signals to be activated simultaneously. Okay. Now, when we are encoding the control signals and putting them as encoded bit stream in the control memory, that means after reading a location from the control memory to generate the control signals, I have to decode that encoded bit stream. So, that has to pass through a decoder. In case of a decoder, generating more than one decoder output active simultaneously is not possible. So, that puts a restriction that if we have fully encoded bit stream to represent the control signals, I can generate only one control signal at a time. <coughs> I cannot generate more than one control signal at a time. So, these are two extreme cases. One case is where every bit is assigned to a control signal which we call as horizontal microprogramming. <coughs> this is called horizontal microprogramming. And in the second case, when the control signals are fully encoded and the encoded bit stream is stored in the control memory, that is called a vertical microprogramming. So, these are the two extreme cases of microprogramming. One is horizontal and the other one is vertical microprogramming. So, none of these are suitable for our purpose. So, what we need is something in between. That is, we should try to reduce the number of bits in the control memory. <coughs> Simultaneously, we should also be able to generate the required number of control signals in parallel. Okay. So, what we need is something in between which we can call as diagonal microprogramming. So, what in case of diagonal microprogramming, what we have to do is? We have to group the control signals in such a way that in a particular group, no two control signals will be activated simultaneously. Whereas, if I need two control signals to be activated at a time, 
then those two control signals must belong to two different groups. Within every group, the control signals are fully encoded. Okay. So, if this n number of control signals that we put into say m number of groups, then I need m number of decoders. Within every group, the control signals are fully encoded. Okay. And because they are they belong to different groups and every group has a corresponding decoder, so from every decoder I can generate one <coughs> control signal and because I have more than one decoders, so more than one control signals I can generate at a time. Okay. So, here I can reduce the number of bits, but not as less as this as in case of vertical microprogramming. Okay. So, the number of bits in this case will be more than the number of bits needed in case of vertical programming, but it will be less than the number of bits needed in case of horizontal microprogramming. Okay. So, I compromise on the number of bits to attain parallel activation of the control signals. Okay. So, how many fields you should have and in every field how many bits we should incorporate that is the topic of micro instruction design. So, let us see how we can design the micro instructions. Okay. So, let us assume that in a particular system, we have say m number of micro instructions, which are designated as i 1, i 2 to <coughs> i m. So, these are the number of micro instructions. Micro instructions will be identified by analyzing the instructions that you have in the CPU. Okay. And let me assume that I have n number of control signals, so C 0, C 1 up to C n minus 1 or I can also rename as C 1 to C n that does not matter. So, I have m number of micro instructions and I have n number of control signals. Okay. So, whenever any micro instruction is executed, every micro instruction will activate one or more of this control signal. Okay. In some cases, it may be needed that I generate a micro instruction generates only one micro uh, only one control signal some of the micro instructions may generate more than one control signal. So, if it generates more than one control signal, all those control signals are to be activated simultaneously and that we have to consider while designing the micro instructions. Okay. And we say that a control signal C i belongs to a micro instruction say i j, <coughs> if the micro instruction i j activates control signal C i. Right? So, that way more than one control signals can belong to a micro instruction i j, because i j may <laughs> activate more than one control signals. Okay. We also say that given two control signals, say C 1 and C 2. <coughs> We say that these two control signals C 1 and C 2 to be compatible we say this, these two control signals C 1 and C 2 to be compatible if C 1 belongs to i j implies c 2 does not belong to i j. Okay. And vice versa. <coughs> that is c 1 belongs to i j implies C 2 does not belong to I j 
and C2 belongs to Ij implies C1 does not belong to Ij. If this is true, then we say that this control signal C1 and C2 they are compatible. Okay. So, once we define the compatible <coughs> control signals, we can define what is called a compatibility class. So, a compatibility class is defined as a set of control signals such that the control signals within that set are pairwise compatible. Okay. So, a compatibility class will define as a set of control signals which are That is, if say control signals C1, C2 and C3, this forms a compatibility class. This <coughs> indicates that C1, C2 are compatible. C1, C3 is also compatible and C2, C3 they are also compatible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, here they are compatible, uh, the definition that you have given for compatibility, uh, C1, C2. Yeah. So, here they are uh, compatible uh, with respect to only one instruction, IJ or every instruction? With respect to one instruction, they are compatible. Maybe for an instruction IJ they are compatible. For any other instruction they may not be compatible. Okay. So while what we have to do during the design is we have to identify the set of control signals which are compatible with respect to every instruction. Okay. So when I say that a set of control signals it forms a compatibility class that means the control signals within that set are pairwise compatible. So, if I take any pair of control signals within that set, they must be compatible. That is what is a compatibility class. <coughs> okay. And here we have to identify the control signals which are compatible with respect to every micro instruction. Okay. So, that is what we have to do while, while designing. So, in this case, this design can be performed in an analytical way. Okay. So, let us take an example to see how the design can be done. I take a very simple example with only say 4 micro instructions. So, let us take an example. So, here I consider 4 micro instructions say I 1, I 2, I 3 and I 4. So, suppose we have these 4 micro instructions and the control signals which are activated by I 1 are let us say A, B, C, 
and G. Okay. The control signals which are activated by I2, let us say those are A, C, E and H. Control signals which are activated by I3, let us say those are A, D and F. Okay. And the control signals which are activated by I4, let us say those are C, B, C and F. Okay. So, find that for this example, the total con number of control signals that we have are A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. These are the total control signals that we have for this example, out of which A1 activates A, B, C and G, I2 activates A, C, E and H, I3 activates A, D and F, okay. I4 activates B, C and F. Now, before designing the micro instructions for this particular example, let me uh, define one more term that is maximal compatibility class. So, here we have defined what is a compatibility class. I define another term which is maximal compatibility class. So, we will say that maximal compatibility class is a compatibility class to which no other control signals can be included without introducing incompatibility. Okay. So, it is a compatibility class, we have set a compatibility class as the set of control signals which are pairwise compatible. Okay. So, if I have a compatibility class such that I cannot insert any other control signal to the same class without introducing an incompatibility, then that particular compatibility class is called a maximal compatibility class. That means, that compatibility class cannot be expanded further by introducing new control signals. Okay. So, it should be quite obvious that our design should try to find out maximal <coughs> compatibility classes. Because only when I have a maximal compatibility class, then only I can guarantee that I can minimize the number of bits. Okay. If the classes are not maximally compatible, then minimization of the number of bits is not guaranteed. Okay. So, we will try to design the micro instructions keeping in mind that we have to find out the maximal compatibility classes. Now, how do we do it? We do it hierarchically. We follow different steps. Say in step number 1 or S1, I assume that I have different compatibility classes where every compatibility class consists of only one control signal. Okay. So, if a class is having only one control signal that does not violate our compatibility class definition, because there is no other control signal, so there is no question of incompatibility. Okay. So, in step number 1, I consider that all these control signals as independent classes. So, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. So, each of them forms a compatibility class by itself. In step 2, I to try to find out the compatibility classes containing two control signals. Okay. <coughs> For that, what I do is, I take every control signal one after another and try to find, try to pair that with some other control signal in such a manner that compatibility is not violated. Okay. So, first I will take the control signal A 
and try to see whether along with A, I can put some other control signal or not, so that still that pair will remain compatible. Okay. So, here you find that if I take A, I have to see whether B can be paired with A. It cannot be paired because I1 activates both A and B. Can C be paired? No. Can D be paired? No. No. Because I3 needs both and A, both A and D simultaneously. Okay. E cannot be paired because I2 activates both A and E simultaneously. Okay. F cannot be paired. I3 activates both A and F simultaneously. G cannot be paired because A and G they are activated simultaneously by I1. Okay. H again it cannot be paired because I2 activates both A and H simultaneously. So, with A I cannot pair any of the control signals. Let us see whether with B I can pair any of the control signals or not. B D. What else? I think with B, no other control signal can be paired. Then I can have a pair of C, D. I can have a pair of D, E. I can have pair D, G. I can have pair D, H. I can have pair E, F. I can have pair E, G. I can have pair F, G. I can have pair F, H and I can have pair G H. Okay. So, these are the compatibility classes containing two control signals each. Okay. So, once I form the compatibility classes containing two control signals each, from the previous step, I remove all the control signals which are subset or the compatibility classes which are subset of some compatibility class at the next level. So, here you find that except A, all others are subsets of some compatibility class in step 2. Okay. So, I will retain only A and remove all other control signals from here. Okay. Then I go to next step, step 3. And in step 3, my objective is to try to find out compatibility classes containing three control signals. Okay. So, for that what I will do? I will take every compatibility classes from, a, from step 2, where we have compatibility classes containing all the compatibility classes containing two control signals each and try to insert another control signal in that still maintaining the compatibility property. Okay. So, if I do that in step S3, you find that I will have a number of compatibility <coughs> classes like B, D, E, B, D, H, D, E, G, D, G, H, E, F, G and F, G, H. Okay. So, by analyzing this, I can find out that. Okay. So, again, once I find out the compatibility classes containing three control signals each, again I remove from the previous step all the compatibility classes, which is subset of some compatibility class in step S3. Right? So, here you find that except CD, all other compatibility classes can be removed because <coughs> they are subsets of some compatibility class in step number S4, step number S3. Okay. So, once I have this S3, then I should go for next step S4, where we will try to find out compatibility classes containing four control signals each. And here you will find that I cannot insert any other control signal 
with any of the classes in S3. Say for example, BDE. With BDE, I cannot include A. With BDE, I cannot include B is already there, so I do not have to consider that. I cannot include C because B and C they becomes incompatible. Okay. D is already there. What about F? D and F they are activated simultaneously by I3. So, I cannot include F in this because in that case D F will become incompatible. Can I include G? No, because B and G they are activated simultaneously. Can I include H? Yeah, H I can include, so that comes at the next one. So, I have these two B, D, E and sorry. With B, D, E, yeah, here I am trying to find out compatibility classes with 4. So, can I include H with this? E and H, they are activated simultaneously by I2. So, I cannot include any other control signal with BD. So, similarly, if you analyze all of this, you will find that I cannot generate any compatibility class having four control signals. Okay? So, at this step 4, this will be 5 because I cannot generate any compatibility class with four control signals. Okay? So, now find that after forming these, <coughs> These are the maximal compatibility classes that I have. A is a maximal compatibility class because we have seen that I cannot pair any other control signal with A still maintaining compatibility. So, it is a maximal compatibility class. C D is again a maximal compatibility class because I cannot pair any other control signal with C D still maintaining the compatibility property. Okay. Then all these also become a compatibility class. Each of them is a compatibility class and they are maximal. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, 8 maximal compatibility classes. Okay. So, once I find out these compatibility classes, I complete one stage of my design because now I, have, now I have to encode these compatibility classes as different fields. <coughs> the next stage is I have to find out whether all these maximal compatibility classes are needed or not because you find that many of the control signals are common in different compatibility classes. B appears here, B also appears here, D appears here, D also appears here, H appears here, H, al H also appears here. Okay. So, though I have obtained the maximal compatibility classes, but it is quite natural that maybe all these maximal compatibility classes are not needed to be coded. If I can find out a subset of all this set of maximal compatibility classes, which will include all the control signals, then that subset I can encode to generate my desired control signals. <coughs> Okay. So, this is a subset which is called a minimal cover. So, what we have to find out now is a minimal cover of this set of maximal, maximal compatibility classes. Okay. So, what we have to find out is minimal cover of the maximal set of compatibility classes. So, I have to find out of maximal compatibility classes that let us put as MCC. MCC stands for maximal compatibility classes. Okay? So, I have to find out minimal cover of maximal compatibility classes. So, once I find out the minimal cover that is a minimal subset of the set of maximal compatibility classes which includes all the control signals and we will try to include only those control signals with a field corresponding to every maximal compatibility class in the minimal cover. Okay. 
Now this can be done by using a tabula method. So we will use a table which is called a cover table. So what is this cover table? In this cover table, for every maximal compatibility class, we'll have a row, and for every control signal, we'll have a column. Okay. So with the help of this maximal compatibility classes that we have generated, I find that because there are eight maximal compatibility classes, so in the cover table, I have to have eight rows. Okay, and those rows we designate as say K1, K1 means it is a maximal compatibility class containing the control signal A only. Okay. Then we will have K2, it is a maximal compatibility class containing the control signals C and D. We have a row K3 containing the control signals B, D and E. We have to have K4 containing the control signals B, D and H. We have K5 <coughs> containing the control signals D, E and G. We have K6 containing the control signals E, F, G, right? Or D, G, D, G, H, the next one. D, G, and H. We have to have K7 containing the control signals E, F, G, D, G, H. Next one is E, F, G. And we have another row for compatibility class K8 containing the control signals F, G and H. So, these are the number of rows that we will have. <coughs> okay. Again, we will have a column for every control signal. So, for A, we will have one column, for B, we will have another one, C, <coughs> D, E, F, G and H. Okay. So, I have columns corresponding to every control signal and I have rows corresponding to every compatibility class. Now, this table has to be filled up like this. For every row, wherever a control signal corresponding to a given column present is present, I will have, I will put a cross in the corresponding location. Okay. So, for K1, row K1, which contains only the control signal A, I will put a cross in this location. So, this is row corresponding to K1 and column corresponding to control signal A. For K2, which contains control signal C and D, I will put crosses in both these columns C and D. K3, which contains B, D and E. So, B, D and E. For K4, it contains B, D and H. So, I will put B, D and H. Okay. For K5, I will put D, E and G. So, I will have crosses in D, E and G. For K6, it is D, G and H. So, I will have process D, sorry, G and H. K7, E, F and G. So, I will have process E, F and G. K8, F, G and H. So, I will have 
process f g and h right so i complete the cover table now from this cover table i have to find out those maximal compatibility classes which forms a minimal set of the set of maximal compatibility class okay so how do i do it i study this cover table find out the columns i study the columns if there is any column which contains only one cross that means that is a control signal which is included only in the maximal compatibility class corresponding to the row where the cross is present in this cover table so i get a cover table in this cover table i'll try to find out the columns containing only one cross if i get any column cross which contains only one cross that indicates that the row where the cross is present that is the only maximal compatibility class which contains that control signal there is no other com maximal compatibility class containing the same control signal okay now what is our aim our aim is i will try to remove some of the maximal compatibility classes to get the minimal cover such that the minimal cover will contain all the com all the control signals now while trying to eliminate some of these maximal compatibility classes these are the compatibility classes okay such that corresponding to that in a column i have only one cross those compatibility classes cannot be removed because if i remove that compatibility class in that case those control signals will also be removed so in the minimal cover those compatibility classes must be retained so these are the compatibility classes which are called essential compatibility classes and in our minimal cover we must retain the essential compatibility classes okay so you find that by studying this i have two columns the column corresponding to a and the column corresponding to c these are the two columns which contain a single cross <coughs> okay that means the corresponding compatibility classes k1 and k2 these are essential compatibility classes okay so because these are essential compatibility classes they must be retained in our minimal cover okay so k1 and k2 are essential mccs so these two k1 and k2 must be retained in the minimal cover other members of the minimal cover now we'll have to try to find out okay for that you have to follow few steps again by studying this compatibility class i mean by studying this cover table first we have to identify if there are any columns which are identical if there are more than one columns that are identical that means the corresponding control signals are also identical okay so in such cases i'll remove all such columns except one which are identical so i'll retain only one column and the rest of the columns which are identical to that will remove because all those control signals are identical so by studying this cover table you find that there is no such situation there are no columns more than one columns which are identical so i cannot remove any of the columns like that okay the next what we have to do is we have to again by studying the columns we have to find out if there is any column which is a subset of other column okay so if there is any column which is a subset of some other column 
Then the column which is subset that is called a dominated column and the column of which <coughs> it is subset that is called a dominating column. So, if there is any dominating column in the cover table, I remove that column. Okay. So, you find that by studying this cover table, I have these two columns B and D, where B is dominated column and D is the dominating column. Because for every cross in column B, there is a cross in the same row in column D. Okay. So, for this I have one cross here, for this also I have one cross here. Okay. So, what I try to do is, I remove the dominating column. So, this is a column D which dominates column B. Okay. Is there any other such column? F and G. G is the dominating column which dominates over the column F. Okay. So, I, I also remove this column G from the cover table. Okay, because G is the dominating column which dominates over F. I also remove D which is a dominating column which dominates over B. Okay. So, once I remove this, after that what I do is I form a reduced cover table because I have removed some of the entries. Okay. So, what will be the reduced cover table now? We have seen that the MCCs K1, K2, they are essential. So, I have to retain them in the minimal uh, cover. Okay. So, in the reduced cover table, I will have rows corresponding to the other MCCs. I will have row corresponding to K3, I will have row corresponding to K4, I will have row corresponding to K5, K6, K7 and K8, where K3 is equal to B, D, E, K4 is B, D, H, K5 is D, E, G, K6 is D, G, H, K7 is E, F, G and K8 is F, G and H. And the columns that I will retain are B, okay, E, F, and H. Because A and C, they being corresponding to maximal compatibility class, uh, they being corresponding to the essential MCCs, I have to anyway incorporate that. So, in the reduced cover table, I remove that. Okay. Similarly, D and G, we have removed them because those are the dominating columns. Okay. So, the remaining columns I retain and the MCCs which are not essential that I written in the reduced cover table. Okay. So, after doing this, the reduced cover table looks like <coughs> this one. So, this becomes my reduced cover table. Okay. So, once I have this reduced cover table, now as we have done in case of columns that the dominating columns we have removed. In the reduced cover table, I try to find out whether I have rows, some of the rows may be dominating some other rows. 
So in this case, our approach will be that a row which is dominated that will remove. In case of column, the column which is dominating that we have removed. In case of rows, our approach will be reversed. That is a row which is dominated that will be removed. So if you do that, you find that K5 and K6, these two are dominated rows. Okay? Because in case of K5, I have only one cross in column E, which is also present in case of K3. For K6, I have only one cross in column H, which is also present in K8. So these two rows, K5 and K6, they are dominated rows. So I remove K5 and K6. Because these are the control signals which are present in other MCCs. So I can as well remove them. Okay. Now we have to select from the remaining K3, K4, K7 and K8, what are the MCCs that we should retain in the minimal cover. Okay. So now if you study this, you will find that I have two options. I can have K3 and K8 along with K1, K2 because then I cover all the control signals. If I just incorporate K3 and K8, I have B, E, F, G because F and F, H because F and H are present in K8 and B, E are present in K3. Okay. Similarly, I can also have K4 and K7 instead of K3 and K8. Then also, I cover all the control signals. Okay. So, my minimal cover can be K1, K2. Anyway, I have to retain them because they are essential. In addition to this, I can have K3 and K8. So, this can be one minimal cover or I can have K1 and K2, those being essential, have to be retained in any of the minimal covers and the remaining two can be K4 and K7. So, these are the two minimal covers that I can have. Okay. So, now the micro instructions that we have to design can follow either this or this. So, this indicates that in the micro instruction, I have to have four fields, one field corresponding to K1, the other <coughs> field corresponding to K2, other one corresponding to K3 and K8. So, there are four fields. Here also, I will have four fields corresponding to K1, K2, K4 and K7. Okay. So, I can use any of these minimal covers to design my micro instruction and within every field, the bits or the control signals can be fully encoded. Okay. So, this is a formal design approach which can be used for designing the micro instructions. Okay.